first now at the East Gate. One is at the East Gate. It is this world view that we've been talking about, that we've been grappling with, this new grammar that takes you through the gate back into the paradisal realm, right? It's that non-dual consciousness. It's something in our consciousness that we learned. We went out into fragmentation and we came back. We came back to a place where we could understand how to put it all together from a non-dual perspective. So I'm going to keep asking you maybe you know a good project for you because there's a little bit of the school teacher in me uh, in terms of your world view is to create a belief statement. There's something in the book Bay has stressed about this too. Because I do believe that people are coasting at this time in modernity, that we really don't catalyze our belief. And if you read you know, Bruce Lipton's book, The Biology of Belief, you begin to see that actually what you believe is affecting your genetic structure. Right? It's affecting the formation of your genes, it's called epigenetics, that which switches on and off your positive and negative genes, is your belief. It's so easy these days, isn't it? Just to kind of like drift. Like you don't have, you're not accountable. Rome isn't going to come after you and burn you at the stake. And, uh, so, but writing your own belief statement that integrates the I, the we, the it, and systems that says your vision of what you believe. The great thing about writing a belief statement is that you can revise it. <laughs> right? Hopefully. Yeah. Yes, hopefully, as you grow, you revolve. <laughs> but if you don't catalyze the belief, it doesn't it doesn't somehow activate what it needs to activate in terms of who you are. You know, so and one of the perspectives in the Vedas, of course, is that the individual self is always sort of symbolized as S, with a small s, the self. And then the complete whole self is symbolized with the capital S. It's a very neat way of actually saying the self is a real aspect of the self, of the entire self. So it's it both has the individuation and the mirror of the wholeness. So, catalyze your belief. Let's um, move, as we said, we went into action. The Dalai Lama says, it is not enough to be compassionate. Wow. That's his holiness. No, 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 no. It is not enough to be compassionate. One must act. It is not enough to be compassionate, one must act. And so I've become very interested in this notion of sacred action or sacred activism. Clearly, there are things that need to be done, that need to happen. I fundamentally believe they don't happen by forcing. So I'm going to hold to that position and we can discuss it. So what is the the new form of <coughs> activism. I'd like to sort of share some thoughts with you and then have a discussion around action. Anybody got any questions or you could proceed? I believe that the form of action that is emerging that I call sacred action or sacred activism. You know, people use different terms. Andrew Harvey really coined the term sacred activism. Um, Carolyn Casey talks about visionary activism. Some people talk about spiritual activism, but you get the idea. It's to denote something that's changed in the form of our activism our action on behalf of the world and on, uh, on behalf of other beings that is different than the way we were doing things. 
from knee-jerk, reactive, finger-pointing, projection, and gross judgmentalism to contemplative, resonant, dialogic, and listening postures. Does that say it? I mean, does that like, are we speaking the truth here? From observer to witness, from problem sourced to solution centered. Van Jones, who Don Beck, uh, not, not Don Beck, what is the guy's name? Michael No, the guy who's got the TV show, Beck. <coughs> Glenn Beck. <laughs> Glenn Beck started a campaign against Van Jones at the White House, who was the Green Czar appointed by Obama and created so much uproar that Van Jones had to leave his post. Tragedy, really, of the muckraking. But uh, Van Jones has written a great book about, called The Green Collar Economy, about how we can really transform our economy. You, you know this, right? And he has in there some modalities of the new activism. One of the things he says is the sign of this new activism is moving from problem focus to solution centered. See, if you're defined by the problem, this is also your spiritual teaching, right? I'm just here as the support crowd. <laughs> That's why I like the centers, and I, I feel very at home giving talks and workshops at the Centers for Spiritual Living, because I think it's very relevant. Um, if you live inside the problem, it is, that's the victim consciousness, too. If you live inside your victim status, you, you know, that's it. You keep re rehearsing your victim status or your problem or your disease or whatever you're focused against. But, you know, it's that quote from Einstein that gets quoted a lot these days. The same consciousness that created the problem cannot solve the problem. Has to be solved from a different place in consciousness. So you can, it's very, very important to understand this, right? That we get defined by the problems, and then we live inside the definition of the problem. How can I solve the problem? It's by looking in another territory, looking from a different modality, looking from the witness, looking from the solution. What would its solution look like? I didn't have to carry these feelings. If I, we didn't have to live in this way. What would, the, what would constitute the solution? See the shift in activism? Like, let's get at the problem. Well, OK. Transition towns, you must know their work, right? Transition towns, incredible group from England that's now picking up steam in various parts of the US are exactly in this modality. They're saying the ecological, social, community, systemic problems are so great that if you focus on changing them, you're going to spend your life trying to change the problem. Build your community. So transition towns is about how do you, in your own town, get a group of people together to say, what would work for us in this town? What would constitute some solutions? Even if it's just community gardening, you start with the solutions, what those solutions look like. And you start building from there. And before you know it, some of your solutions are actually beginning to uh, address systemic problems, transition times. Very good.